Um, so good afternoon. Let us start our lecture today. Uh, so today we continue our, our system living theory, right? So let me read you um, what was going on in the system living theory. Um, so uh, system. So in the stem Lubin eigenvalue problem, you have to solve um, um, Px, Px prime, prime plus Qx, Px is equal to lambda, Wx, Px, all right? <coughs> So basically, this is the stem Lubin uh, problem, um, and you solve it on um, on x belongs to an open interval a b, right? At a, you're gonna have c one p prime at a plus c two p a is zero, and c two and c three p prime at b plus c four p b is zero. So this is boundary condition. <coughs> So basically, this is a, a stem Lubin uh, 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 problem. Uh, you want to find this phi and this lambda, right? <clears throat> Just that P, P prime, prime plus Qx, Q, phi is lambda Wx, Px. W is given, and x is in uh, an open interval IB. All right? You have two boundary conditions. <clears throat> One boundary condition is answer point A. So, um, so you're gonna have C1, uh, the first derivative of phi plus C2, uh, phi is zero at the point A, and C3, the first derivative plus C4, phi at the point B is zero, right? So this is the problem. So the problem has a series of solutions. Lambda 1, P1, Lambda 2, P2, and Lambda N, Pn. All right? So this problem has a series of solutions. Lambda 1, P1, Lambda 2, P2, Lambda N, Pn. Um, so Lambda N, lam, this is uh, eigenvalue. Right? And P1, P2, Pn, the eigen stem Lewin. This is stem Lewin eigen. Um, stem Lewin eigen function. All right. <coughs> it's clear. Um, so, so this problem has a series of solutions, P1, um, lambda 1, P1, lambda 2, P2, lambda n, Pn, and, and the lambda 1, lambda n, the sum Lewin eigenvalues, and P1, P2, Pn, the sum Lewin eigenfunctions. All right? So, um, uh, P1, Pn are orthogonal. In, with respect to the inner product. To the inner product. Um, so you have f that g w will be integral from a to b of w to x, f x g x, the x is zero, right? So all of the eigenfunctions they are orthogonal with respect to the inner product with the weight w, right? So you have to put the weight w into the the, the integral from a to b. So when you take the inner product of f and g, you have to take f times g times this weight w, right? And then um, then we're gonna have then um, the inner 
product of PN, PM, W, which is integral from A to B, of PMX, PMX is zero, right? When M is different from M, right? <coughs> Any questions? Clear? Yeah. Right. So I explain again. This is the uh, stern Lubin eigen, uh, eigen value problem. Um, so P, Q, and W, they are given functions. Lambda and phi are functions that you need to find. Um, we don't know what they are, but we know that there is a series of solutions lambda 1, phi 1, lambda 2, phi 2, lambda and phi n, all right? Um, so the lambda 1 to lambda n, they are called slum Lubin eigen values. And P1, P2, Pn, they are slum Lubin eigen functions. Right? So those eigen functions are orthogonal with the weight W. Right? So if I define inner product to be the, pro the integral from A to B of W times F times G, dx, then all of the Pn, Pm, they are orthogonal in the sense that if you take the integral from A to B of W, Pn, Pm, they are zero. Questions? Is good? Right. So, <coughs> so special property. Any function, continuous function f, Can be can be uh, uh, expressed uh, by a generalized Fourier series Fourier series <coughs> expansion. Uh, of the eigen function all right so fx will be the sum when n is only from 1 to infinity of cn pn x so this is c1 p1x plus c2 p2x plus cn pnx all right. So uh, a special property of the sum Lubin eigen functions uh, is the following: If you take a continuous function f, right, this function can be expressed as a generalized Fourier series of the eigen functions. In, the, in other words, you can write f x as c one p one plus c two p two plus C N P N, etc. Right? Questions? Right. Um, so how can I compute the coefficient C N? Is the fact that all of the PN are orthogonal. Yes? Uh, you can, uh, during the orthogonality, you can use the, the integral of Wx, Fx, Gx, Dx divided by the integral from A to B of uh, the, the original uh, C function squared. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So you know that all of the PN, PM, they are orthogonal with respect to this inner product, right? In other words, I can inner product fx with pnx with the w, right? So this is p1 pn w plus p2 pn w plus pn pn w, right? So because of orthogonality, Everything else goes away except the PNPN, right? Uh, so this is C1, C2, 
MCN. All right, so which means that you have Mx, Tnx is equal to Cn, Tn, Tnw, right? Right, because all of the Tn, Tm are tonal with respect to this inner product with the weight. Right? So you remember that we have always the weight here. So, so, so if you inner product F with uh, with Tn with respect to this inner product W, the phi one Pn will go away. The Pn, uh, phi two Pn will go away. So the leftover is Cn Pn Pn, right? So now you're gonna have integral from A to B of Wx, Fx, Pnx dx is equal to Cn integral from A to B of Wx, Pnx, Pnx dx. So then this gives you Cn integral from A to B of Wx, Cn square x dx, right? So Cn will be integral from A to B of Wx, Fx, Pnx dx, dividing by integral from A to B, Wx, Pnx square. All right? So this is exactly the same ideas that we um, we did before. In order to compute Cn, you in our product Fx with Pn, right? So all of this guy goes away. You're gonna have P Fpn is Cn, Pn, Pn. So Fpn is into a from A to B of W, Fx, Pnx, Dx, right? Because now we have the way W. And, and Pn, Pn will be Indoor from A to B, W, Pn squared, right? So you compute Cn by dividing Fpn by Pn, Pn. Questions? It's good? Right. So this is all what you need. And, and, and the uh, stem living against functions are very powerful because you can express any continuous function on this basis, right? So you pick any eigen functions, you can express it this way. It's clear? Questions? Now let us try to do uh, some more exercises on uh, Storm UV. So, um, so the um, eigenfunction value problem. Uh, you have x p prime prime plus p over x is equal to um, lambda one over x two, and then the boundary condition at one is zero and boundary condition at e is also zero, right? So I want to know what is p, what is q, what is w, what is a, what is b. Can you tell me tell me what are the values of um, p, q, w, and a, b? Yes. P is x. Q is one over x. Mm -hmm. W is one over x. Mm -hmm. uh, a is one and b is b. Right. Can you sign the fact of paper, please? Right. So in this case, you have what? You have p is x. Q is one over x. Um, uh, a is one, and b is also is e. Right. <coughs> So in this case, uh, I remind you that, okay, so what is the form of P, um, PQ, right? So you have QX is lambda WQ, right? So the original form of the Sturm-Liouville problem is P, P prime, prime plus Q, 
P is lambda W P. Right? So now you map everything, right? So this W will be this P. Alright? So the Q will be 1 over X and the W will be 1 over X. Right? And the domain will be from 1 to E. So A is 1 and B is E. Questions? It's good. Right, so, so which means that this theory applies. You're going to have a series of uh, solutions. <coughs> All right, so this problem, I mean, according to the stem building theory, it's going to have a series of solutions, lambda 1, P1, lambda 2, P2, lambda N, Pn. Um, so lambda 1, lambda N, the stem Lewin eigenvalues, and P1, Pn, the stem Lewin eigenfunctions. All right? So let us try to solve. Now, we will find uh, the explicit form. of lambda n and pn. All right? Questions? Good. So according to the theory, you're going to have a series of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, like in the previous case. Um, now what we do is we try to find the explicit values of lambda n and pn. It's clear? Right. So let us write down the equation. So you have x, p, Pram, pram plus P of X is lambda of X P. Right? I'm gonna try to develop this term. So what is the value of this derivative? Yes? X P double prime plus P prime. Can you sign the back of paper please? So this I'm gonna develop it and I get X P double uh, Double <laughs> prime plus uh, p, uh, uh, p prime. All right. All right. Questions? Right. So the first thing that I do is I expand this quantity. I have x p prime prime is x p prime uh, second plus p uh, uh, prime. I'm gonna plug this back to the equation. I'm gonna have x p second plus p prime plus p over x and this is p all right it's clear so i, I plug this expansion back into the equation i have x p second plus uh, p prime plus p over x is lambda uh, p over x and so i multiply both sides both sides <coughs> with x. Um, so you have x squared p second plus x p prime plus p is lambda p. All right. Questions? It's good. It's clear. Uh, x prime again. According to the theory, we know that there is. Uh, a series of solutions like this, and now we wanna we wanna check this theory, right? We wanna solve and find the explicit form of lambda n and pm. What I do is I expand x p prime prime, so this gives me x p second plus p prime. I plug it back <coughs> to the first equation. I have x p second plus p prime plus p over x is lambda p over x. I multiply both sides of this guy with x. So I have x squared p second plus x p prime plus p is lambda p. Can I simplify this equation? Yes? Can we not just go ahead and start making a characteristic equation? Uh, not yet, because I I want to simplify this first. Yes? So do you want to move the lambda p over to Can you sign the back of paper, please? So I'm going to move lambda to here, right? So I'm going to have x squared plus x p prime plus one minus lambda p and this is zero, right? And this become a differential equation, right? 
and we can use the ma ma method of characteristic. So then this equation, uh, this equation, Square plus one plus number is zero. All right. Plus lambda. Um, uh, uh, minus lambda. Thank you. Thank you. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? Um, right. So, so this is a Cauchy-Euler uh, differential equation, and the characteristic equation is of course R square plus one minus lambda is zero. <coughs> right. Uh, so you can check Haberman book uh, on how this for this uh, how to solve a uh, uh, Cauchy Euler Euler uh, differential equation. All right. <coughs> so in this case, you are also have three cases. Um, case one, um, you have um, <coughs> uh, one minus lambda is negative. Case two, one minus lambda is zero, and case three, one minus lambda is positive. So in this case, there is no eigenvalue. You do the same uh, trick as before, and there is no eigenvalue. So the last case gives you the eigenvalue, all right? So to know how to obtain a characteristic equation for, for uh, a cauchy euler uh, equation, you need to go to the Haberman books on, uh, on differential equation, which is uh, uh, the previous class. Um, so, but suppose that we know that there is of uh, this characteristic equation as y plus one minus lambda is zero, right? So you also consider three cases. So the first two cases are trivial, and the last case give you one minus lambda is positive, right? Right. So let us focus on uh, the last case. Uh, so for the last case, when case three, you have p x will be uh, c one of sinus of uh, square root of one minus lambda uh, mm, log x plus c two cosinus of square root of one minus lambda log x. Right. So this is the cauchy euler formula. Uh, any questions on this? So I uh, so I explain again. Um, so after I remove, um, I put lambda uh, to the left hand side. I have this equation. So this is a cauchy um, euler differential equation. And in order to solve a cauchy euler uh, differential equation, you're gonna use the method of characteristic. The characteristic equation in this case is r squared plus one minus lambda is zero. So you can check this formula in the book. Um, there are three cases. The first two cases, you don't have um, eigenvalue, and we focus on the last case. In the last case, according to the formula uh, for the cauchy euler problem, you're gonna have c1 sine s of one, square root one minus lambda log x, plus c2 cosine s of uh, square root lambda, uh, one minus square root lambda log x, right? So, yes? Why are we using logarithmic uh, natural log of x on this one? So this yeah. is basically um, this is basically the Cauchy Euler uh, problem, right? So for Cauchy Euler problem, after you write a characteristic equation, you have to put logs, right? So 
I recall you that for, uh, for the other equation, um, for the other equation, right? So if you have like um, a v second plus b v prime plus c v is zero, this is the second order differential equation with constant coefficient, right? So the characteristic equation, when you solve the characteristic equation, you don't have log, you have just x. But this is a cauchy problem, yeah. according to the formula that you can find in this book. Um, I mean, if you, uh, if you are not familiar with this, I can take the next class to explain <coughs> to you, to review to you about this equation. Do you want me to review it? Okay, so, so for the uh, next two days, Tuesday, I'm gonna review for you. And I try to distinguish uh, two cases. The first case is this kind of uh, second order differential equation with constant coefficient. And, and, and this is basically the, the, the equation that we made in the, in the previous class. In this case, this is a second order differential equation with non-constant coefficient. And for this kind of equation, you have to put a lock, right? But I'm gonna do that on, on Tuesday. So let, let us try to do, suppose that you know um, um, the difference uh, between these two equations and suppose um, that now you have lock. Let us uh, try to finish this uh, eigenvalue problem and then in a separate class on Tuesday, we're gonna review uh, the two kind of differential equation and how to solve it, all right? Questions? All right, so now suppose that we have this uh, form with a lock, so, right? Uh, so I remind you that here you have a lock and here you don't, you don't have a lock. Right. So now, so, so suppose that you have this formula in hand, um, which I will review for you on, on, on Tuesday. Uh, but suppose that we have this form, so what should we do? Yes? Uh, would we apply the first boundary equation? Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? Uh, so now, uh, what is, uh, so now let us apply the first boundary condition, right? The first boundary condition is P1 is going to be zero. Um, right, so what can I obtain when P1 is zero? <coughs> yes? Yes, can you sign at the back of paper, please? Um, so in this case, you're gonna reduce the C2 is zero because zero is going to be C1 sinus of square root of lambda log one plus C2 cosinus of square root one minus lambda log one, right? So I plug one into the equations. Um, so when I plug one there, so I have log one is zero, so I have C1 um, sinus of square root of one minus lambda times zero plus C2 cosinus of square root of one minus lambda times zero. So this gives me C1 times zero plus C2 times one. And this is C2. So basically C2 is zero. All right, that's good. Um, so um, I explain again. Now I, I, I use the first boundary condition. Um, the first boundary condition is P1 is zero. So when P1 is zero, you have zero is C1 sinus of log one, so log one is zero. C2 cosinus of log one, log one is zero. So I have C1 times sinus of zero plus C2 cosinus of zero, which gave uh, me C1 times zero plus C2 times one. This is C2, right? Which means that C2 is zero. Um, so, uh, so now C2 is zero, which means that Px is going to be C1 sinus of square root one minus lambda log x. All right, that's good. Um, so, um, what is the <coughs> next step? Uh, sorry. Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So now you're gonna apply the second boundary condition. P is zero which means that um, zero is equal to C1 sinus of square root one minus lambda log E. <coughs> right, so log E is one, which means that sinus of one minus square root lambda is going to be zero. What can I say about a lambda? Yes? The square root of one minus lambda equals N pi. Yes, can you sign at the back of the paper, please? So which means that one minus lambda 
is equal to n prime, right? So we have a series of solutions, right? We have a series, uh, uh, which means that one minus lambda is n times square, which means that lambda is one minus n times square. Right? So we have a series. of solutions, all right? Uh, in this case, we have a series of solutions. Lambda one will be one minus pi square. Lambda two will be one minus two pi square. And lambda n will be one minus n pi square, all right? In this case, you're gonna have a series of solutions. One minus pi square, one minus um, two pi square, one minus n pi square. Right. So what are the value of uh, phi in this case? Yes? Uh, the sine of n pi log x. Yes, can you send back the paper, please? Right, so, uh, so the phi n will be, phi n of x will be, um, C1 sinus, so I can remove it also, <coughs> it doesn't matter. Sinus of square root 1 minus lambda n uh, log x, and this is sinus of n pi log x. Questions? All right, so you, you can uh, suppose that now you know how to solve it all. Of course, you are on a different equation. I'm going to review it on Tuesday. But suppose that you know that. Uh, you arrive, after plugging the second boundary condition, to the conclusion that sinus of square root 1 minus lambda is 0, which means that square root 1 minus lambda is n pi. And this gives you lambda is 1 minus n pi squared. Right? Uh, so in this case, you're going to have a series of solutions. 1 minus pi squared, 1 minus 2 pi squared, 1 minus n pi squared. Um, and then the phi n will be sinus of the square root 1 minus lambda uh, n log x, and phi n will be um, sinus of n pi log x. Questions? It's clear? Right, so, um, so we know that um, phi n is, of, uh, is an orthogonal basis. <coughs> so from the theory, we know that phi n is orthogonal to each other with respect to an inner product. What is the inner product in this case? Right? So we know that, okay, there's inner products so that all of the phi n are orthogonal. Uh, so what is this inner product? Mm -hmm. Yes? Is it with phi n, phi n, and the weight itself, w with the 1 over x? Yes, it? can you send a bunch of paper, please? So in this case, you're going to have that phi n, phi n, they are orthogonal with respect to the weight of u. In this case, the W is 1 over x, right? So this is going to be the integral from 1 to E, uh, 1 over x uh, of sinus of n pi log x, sinus of n pi log x. And we want to check that this is 0, right? <coughs> so this is the W. That we found from the, and this is phi n, all right? And this is phi n, right? So we know from the, uh, from the, the, the beginning of the lecture that phi n and phi m are orthogonal with respect to this w, all right? Um, which means that when you integrate from one to e, you put one of x here, then uh, you multiply sinus n pi log x and sinus of m pi log x dx, this is going to be zero, right? So this is something that we have to check. Now, um, um, so we 
check that interval one from one to e of uh, sinus of n pi log x sinus of m pi log x one of x dx is zero. Now what we have to check is that this guy is zero. So any ideas of how to prove that this is zero? Mm, anyone else? I want to prove that this is indeed zero, right? So this is my Pn, this is my Pm, this is W. And theory said that this integral has to be zero because they're orthogonal, right? Now, but I want to check by hand that this is really zero. Yes? If they're orthogonal, they only have to check one of them? Mm -hmm. uh, you check, I mean, I don't, I, I don't check one of them, I check the general n and n. So P1, P2, P3, P4, P4 and P1, P5, they're all orthogonal, so I can put n, m, a b3. Yes? So we know both both the sine functions are odd, and one over x is symmetric across the y-axis. So then can we just use the, uh, the fact of odd and even functions in this case? Because we have an odd times an odd times an even. Yeah, but this is not symmetric, right? So this one from the yeah. Any better idea? Yes? It's a trick, but we have to see it. Yes? Does it have to be the same with like the sign for any random different? So, hint, you use uh, the change of variable. But what is the change of variable in this case? I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to put a new variable, y, and I want to change this into an integral of y, uh, from x to y, right? What is the new variable? One over x. Close. You can go a, bit, a little bit further than that. You see it. So logarithm. What? Logarithm. Yes. Can you send it back a paper, please? Now I I wanna do a change of variable. I have log x, right? All right. So so dy will be log x prime dx, and this is one over x dx. All right. I use a new variable, and I put log x here uh, to be a new variable y. All right, so when I put uh, log x to be the new variable y, um, the dy will be one over x dx. And here I have dy, this is y, and this is y, right? Um, so I have interval of sinus <coughs> of m pi y, sinus of m pi, y and this is dy right and this is the thing that we are familiar with right so I explain again I'm gonna put a new uh, a, a new variable the new variable will be log x right um, so the d of this new variable will be can you sign back the paper please? so dy will be log x prime dx and this is 1 over x dx all right so this interval will be sinus of n pi y because here I put y to be log x sinus of n pi y right and this guy will become dy but now what are the two uh, boundaries now of y yes is it natural log of 1 and 0 yes and natural log of, of 1 and is it the one isn't it, um, 1 yes can you sign the back of paper please so here I put zero and I put one because uh, when um, uh, because y is log x, right? So so when x is one, y will be log of one and this is zero. And <coughs> x is e, y will be log of e, and this is one. 
and you say at the back the place of this. Um, right? So so the two boundaries, the two boundaries will be zero and one because y is log x, which means that when x is one, y will, will be zero, and when x is e, y will be one. Right. Questions? Now I want to uh, I want uh, I show I want to show that this is zero. Right, so I compute uh, one over the interval from one over uh, zero to one sinus of m pi y sinus of m pi y dy. So how can I compute this integral? What is sinus times sinus? Sinus cosine minus one. What? Isn't the identity cosine minus one? No. I want to know what is the formula for sinus capital I sinus y. What is it? We use it several times. What is this formula? <laughs> this is cosinus minus cosinus, but what kind of cosinus? Right, so it's gonna be cosinus. This is one half of cosinus minus cosinus, right? What is it? What is this, this cosinus and what is, yes? Is it x plus y? Can you say the back of this? So this is x minus y minus x plus y. Right, so this is the kind of formula that you have to remember because this is, uh, this is common, right? So you have sinus x, sinus y, will be one half of cosinus x minus y minus <coughs> cosinus x plus y. Right, so now I'm gonna use this formula. I'm gonna have one half of cosinus of um, n pi <coughs> minus n pi y minus cosinus of m pi y plus m pi y dy. All right, and this is integral from zero to one, of course, one half of cosinus of um, n minus m pi y minus cosinus of n plus m pi y dy. All right, it's clear. So I explain again. We know that they are orthogonal. So this is given for free, but even the theorem said that, I want to check it, right? So I want to check that integral from zero to e of phi n, phi n times this weight w is going to be zero. What I do is I put y to be log x. This change of variable will, con will transform this integral from something which is much easier. <coughs> this is integral from zero to one of sinus n pi y, sinus n pi y dy, all right? Now I'm gonna use this formula, sinus x sinus y. Sinus x sinus y will be one half of cosinus of x minus y minus cosinus x plus y. I plug it here. So this gives me one half cosinus n pi y minus n pi y, all right? And here I have cosinus n pi y plus n pi y dy. Right? I put one half outside and have cosinus of n minus m pi y minus cosinus n plus m pi y. And this is zero y. Yes? Um, because it's only integrate with a sign. Mm -hmm. So we only have plug in sign for y equals zero. Mm -hmm. Can you say the back of the paper, please? Because the first guy gives you one half sinus of n minus m pi y divided by n minus m pi, and I evaluate zero and one, minus one half sinus of n plus m pi y, dividing by n plus m pi, and I evaluate zero and one, they're both zero. All right, because sinus of n plus m pi is zero, sinus of zero is zero, sinus of n plus m pi, 
It's also zero, and so that's zero is zero. So basically, this is zero, right? I explain it again. From here, f sinus times sinus. Because this is sinus times sinus, I have this formula. This formula is something that you have to remember, right? So we have sinus x sinus y is one half cosinus x minus y minus cosinus x plus y. I plug this formula here. I have cosinus n minus m minus m pi y minus cosinus n pi y plus m pi y. So the first guy is cosinus n minus m pi y. The second guy is n plus m pi y, right? I check the antiderivative of the first guy. This is sinus n minus m pi y divided by n minus m pi. I evaluate zero and one. This gives me zero. The second guy is sinus n plus m pi y divided by n plus m pi. I evaluate zero and one. This gives me zero, right? So these are the formula that you have to remember. Um, good. So questions: What 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 if I have cosinus x cosinus y? What is the formula? <coughs> Right here, I have sinus sinus. Uh, then this gives me cosinus x minus y minus x plus y. Yes? Can it be the same formula as that except that it be added together instead of subtracting? Can you say it back the paper, please? Right. Uh, so basically, in this case, you have one half of cosinus x minus y plus cosinus of x plus y. Right? So if you have cos cosinus, cosinus, this is the sum. Right. If you have sinus sinus, this is the uh, the difference. Those are the formula that you have to to remember to Sinus, right? Is one half of cosinus of x minus y minus cosinus of x plus y. What is your question? So it's like the first part was like just the y minus like, x. Does it matter like that <coughs> it's x minus y, but could it be y minus x? Is it? Can I write like y minus x? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I? Anyone can answer these questions? Yes, because uh, cosine is an even function, so anything that's negative would be the same. Right. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? Because this guy and this guy, they're the same. Right? So cosine of um, A will be the same with cosine of minus A. Right? So which means that cosine of x minus y is the same with cosine of y minus x. Right? But if I put it here, sinus, then it's not the same. But because this is sinus, so cosinus of x minus y and cosinus of y minus x, they are the same. Which means that here it doesn't matter if you put x first and y uh, after, or y first and x after. Right. Yes? A, a question on what you raised a moment ago. Um, we proved that the inner product was zero. Yes. But by the nature of phi, we're expecting it to be zero. Right. So are we checking it to make sure we didn't make an error in getting phi, or is it just a good exercise? Right, so can you say the back of paper, please? So basically, this inner product is always zero, according to theory, right? So what we did is to check this uh, thing, as he mentioned, to make sure that we found the uh, good uh, phi n and phi m. So in this uh, process, if I take this inner product, and this is not zero, which means that I make a mistake in my computation, right? So we always expect that this is zero. Questions? So when we're working the problem, do we need to check this every time? You don't have to, um, but if I ask you to check in the exam, you have to check, okay. or in the, in the homework. Right. right, so now let us try to solve uh, this uh, problem. Right, so, so far, so, so the stuff will be in problem. <coughs> problem that 
temperature, so is L of lambda is um, x p prime plus p over x is lambda one over x p. Right. So in in other words, I have um, this is equal to lambda w p, and then the p n that we found is sinus of n pi log x, and the lambda n will be. 1 minus n pi squared, right? So this is the Stumbleupin problem that we solve. We, 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 we prove that um, if we consider this equation, L phi is uh, lambda W phi. Of course, there will be boundary condition. With boundary condition. There's always, there's always by recognition, P1 is zero and P is zero. We found a set of eigenfunction, uh, and the phi n will be sinus n pi x. The, uh, we found also a set of eigenvalues, lambda n is one minus n pi squared, right? Yes? For this one, oh, never mind, you, you had it there. That's true. So now we need to solve the P's. So using the uh, eigen the sum leaving, the sum leaving, <coughs> and again functions. So the boundary value problem. So you're gonna have L U. L U is X U prime prime plus uh, U of X is equal to one of X. U at one is equal to U at E, and this is zero. Right? So after you have the eigenvalue and eigenfunction, now you have to, to solve the problem that L U is one of x, right? So how can I solve this problem? <coughs> this is going to be similar to what we did before, right? How can I solve this problem? Yes? We have to use the phi n and lambda n that we got in the last one, right? Right. And you can do the expansion, but I want to know how you expand it. So this is the, uh, the the source, right? You're gonna expand this on this basis, right? Got it. So we expand one of x on a basis. Right, so you're gonna have one of x, this is sum when n is going from one to infinity of C1, uh, Cn. So, so before expanding it, it, let us try to expand u first. So it's going to be the same, but I want to show you how to expand u. We expand u on the basis. <coughs> so remember that in the case when you have, like in the previous problem, where you have Pn is going to be mx, and suppose that you have u is zero is u one is zero, right? 
So what you do is you expand U on the basis um, um, A and T and T. And then you expand F on the basis, right? <coughs> and then you determine that A and will be B and over lambda. Remember that? So here you want to do the same. In the, sim in the simple case of the previous lectures, you have what? You have u second is f, u, for instance, you have u zero is u one. Uh, u zero and zero, u one, they're both zero. What you do is that you expand u x to be the sum when n is going from one to infinity of a n p n, and you expand f to be the sum when n is going from one to infinity of b n p n x, and then a n will be b n over lambda. So here you want to do the same, right? So, uh, so you're going to expand. Um, ux is going to be the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n free nx, right? So, so this gives me interval from 0 to infinity of a n sinus of n prime log x. Alright? It's clear. So, um, so now uh, I'm going to compute L u. So L u will be um, um, x times u prime prime plus u of x. Right? I expand again. I'm going to use the, exactly the same strategy that I use for the case of the Laplace operator, right? So in the case of the Laplace operator, what I did is I expand u on the basis on the on the eigen functions and I expand f on the eigen function and I identify the coefficient a n of u to be the coefficient of b n divided by lambda. This is in the previous lectures. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna expand u on p n, right? Because any continuous function can be expand, can be expanded using p n, right? Uh, so in this case, u x will be this guy. So I compute l u. This is the l u, right? L u will be x, will be x times u prime prime plus u over x. So what is this? This uh, the value of this series in this case? Yes, of course. This is of course. This is always one of x. Can you say the back of paper, please? But I want to see what is the series when I apply L u to this series. If I plot this series here, what do I get? So let me try to do this more carefully. So you have x times, what is u prime? So here I have what? I have the sum. Um, so let me do it um, slower so that you see it. Right, so if I have this guy here, what is So if I have this series, u x is somewhere n is going from one to infinity of a n p n, what is x u prime? Yes. Zero. No. I have this series, <coughs> oh, sorry. and I want to to take x time the derivative of this series. What is it? This is going to be x, the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n, free n, x prime. Right? And what is it? Yes? Don't you think a n lambda n? Not yet. So, but, but this is close. Can you say it? But yes? Um, a n squared, b n, um, a n squared, b n, um, something like that? Yes. 
and we say the vector properties. So this gives me the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n p n prime. This is simple, right? Right? So you have a series, you have to take the derivative. What you do is you take the derivative of each one of them and you take the sum, right? <coughs> no. Now I'm going to take, an, so which, which means that this, I have the integral from 0 to infinity of a n x <coughs> p n prime x. Prime. Right. So now I'm going to have x u prime. Prime. What is it? I take this derivative of this series. What is the derivative of this series? Yes? Um, will it be the, the same as the theorem or just be a double prime? Can you say I'm back to play practice? So this gives you a n of x p n prime prime, right? So when, whenever you have a series, you just do everything with the, the components of the series, it doesn't matter. So I explain again. I have this series. You, have, you So now I have a basis. I can expand you, right? So I have u is a n p n sum. u prime will be the derivative of this sum, which means that you take the sum of all of the derivative and you multiply everything with x. Now I want to take a, the next derivative, right? When I take the next derivative, I just take the derivative of the guys inside. It's, it's clear? Right. So, now what is u of x? At this series, what is u of x? Yes? And by the paper of this, right? This is going to be the summation of a n, p n of x, which means that, which means that I don't, I don't do anything basically. I just have to do the same thing on the p n and I take the sum, right? So now, what is l u? Yes. Just the sum of those two. Right. Can you sign the back of paper please? So l u will be x prime plus u of x, and this gives me the sum of n is going from 1 to infinity of a n of x p n prime, prime plus p n of x. Right? I just take the sum of this guy and this guy. The, the a n doesn't matter. But the point is that here I see this guy. What, I, what can I say about this guy? You know that this is the eigenfunctions, right? Um, so we prove something, we, we solve something, right? What is x p n prime plus p n of x? What is it? Yes? <laughs> Can you say the back of paper, please? Right, so we know that. So we know that. This is the eigen, uh, the, the stump mean eigen function, right? Now I plug this here. Now I plug this here, so I have um, I have x u prime prime plus u of x, and this is the sum when n is going from one to infinity of uh, a n um, <coughs> lambda n of x up here. Right? So, I explain again. Suppose that I have this u is the sum of a and p n. But I can do this because, I mean, I, I apply the, the pre previous strategy. After I found the eigen functions, I can expand. I expand u as the sum of n is going from 1 to infinity of a and p n. All right? Um, I want to come, I, I know that 1 of x is l u, right? 
I, w I know that one of my, uh, of my exits is u, but I want to solve uh, this thing. Um, so I'm going to compute x u prime. Because here I have x u prime prime plus u of x. So let us compute x u prime. To compute x u prime, I just multiply x with the derivative of u. To take the derivative of u, what I do is I just take the derivative of all over the phi n. Right? Uh, and I take a sum. And so I put the x inside. So here I have an x p n. Now I take the next derivative. When I take the next derivative, of course, the n doesn't matter. Um, uh, so I, I have to take the derivative of x p n prime prime, right? The u over x will be a n p n over x, right? Now I put everything together. I have x u prime prime plus u over x is going to be the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of a n x p n prime prime plus p n over x, right? Good. Now, I know that this is an eigen function, right? Which means that x p n prime prime plus p n over x is lambda n p n over x. This is what we solve from the beginning. This is a sturm liouville eigen value problem. So I plug this guy into the sum. So I have x u prime prime plus u over x is the sum when a n lambda n p n over x, right? So what is the next step to pi a n? Uh, you have one of x here first, right? 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 Can you say the back of the of this? So you have that one of x is equal to the left hand side. So which means that here I have one of x, and this is the sum when n is going from one to infinity of n lambda n p n of x, right? Of course, a n is always the coefficient that I want to find because here I just suppose that u is the sum of a n p n, but I don't know p n, uh, a n, and, and now I have to compute a n, right? So, but I know that x u prime prime plus u of x is 1 of x, uh, which means that 1 of x is equal to this guy. Can I simplify this equation? Yes? Yes, can you send back the paper, please? So now I'm multiplying with x, and so I have 1 is the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity, of a n lambda n p n. Right? Right, so I expand again. First, I expand u in terms of uh, the basis. Then, I do x u prime plus u of x. This is basic computation. What I see is that this is going to be the sum when n is going from, from 1 to infinity of a n x p n prime plus p n of x. But we know that this is a solution of the sturm liouville eigen value problem. So, which means that I can replace all of this mess by something simpler. This is lambda n p n of x. I replace this here, but I know that you solve the equation, so this should be 1 over x, right? So this guy is equal to this guy. What I do is I multiply both sides by x. I'm gonna get one is the sum when n is going from one to infinity of n lambda n p n, right? So I I rewrite this equation here. From one to infinity of n lambda n p n. Now I, how can I find a coefficient? So we know that all of these guys are orthogonal, right? Um, do the inner product. Yes, you do inner product. Can you say the back of the paper, please? So, so we do the inner product, right? So you're going to have what? 1 of you, right? It's going to be, so this is a1 lambda 1 p1 plus a2 lambda 2 p2. Right? So in order to compute this guy, 
I'm gonna do in a product with him. Right, so this gives me um, A1, lambda 1, P1, and P1, <coughs> W, plus A2, lambda 2, P2, Pn, W. Plus um, An, lambda N, Pn, Pn, W. Right? So, of course, all of these guys are orthogonal, we know that, right? So the, the only thing <coughs> which is left is this guy. So I have one PN is going to be AN lambda N PN PN W. Right? So which means that AN lambda N will be in a problem of one PN W over Pn, Pn, W. This gives me the integral from 1 to e of 1, what is the form of Pn? Pn is sinus of n pi, sinus of n pi log x. But I have to multiply with 1 over x dx. Right, so, and here I have the integral from 0 to e of sinus of n pi log x squared times 1 over x dx, right? This is the formula of an lambda n. I explain again. So after multiplying, after, hit, uh, after noticing that 1 over x is this term, I multiply both sides with x. I have 1 is the sum when n is going from 1 to infinity of an lambda n. Uh, Pn, um, I have to compute an lambda n. I'm going to use the, the, the orthogonality. So 1 and Pn is orthogonal. Uh, no, P1 and Pn is orthogonal. P2 Pn is orthogonal. Pn is, Pn is not orthogonal because it is the same uh, function. So all of these guys will be 0. What I get is 1 Pn W is equal to an A n lambda n. Pn Pn W. Right? So A n lambda n will be the inner product of 1 and Pn W with the inner product of Pn Pn and W. So the first one is the integral from 1 to e of sinus n pi log x, 1 over x dx, and the second one will be the integral from zero, 1 to e of sinus n pi x, uh, log x squared, 1 over x dx. It's good questions. So basically, it's the same procedure, but uh, with the, 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 the w. First thing that I, the first integral that I have to do is the integral from 1 to e of 1 sinus of n pi log x 1 over x dx. So how can I compute this interval? <coughs> yes? Integration by parts? No. Yes? Yes, can you sign it back? Can you both sign the back of paper, please? Uh, so I, I do a change of variable, right? So I do uh, y to be log x again. And so so which means that dy will be 1 over x dx. All right? So when x is 1, uh, y is log 1, and this is 0. When x is e, so y is log e, and this is 1. So basically, this interval will be the interval from 0 to 1 of sinus y dy. Ah, uh, and pi y. So. Alright? It's good. I explain it again. So the first interval that I have to compute is the interval here, right? The upper interval. So this is integral from 1 to e, 1 times sinus n pi log x, 1 over x dx. I do the change of variable, I choose y to be log x, so dy will be 1 over x uh, dx. When x is 1, y is 0. When x is e, y is 1, which means that I can change the two boundaries, 1 e to 0, 1. And this interval is going to be sinus n pi y to 1, right? How can I compute this interval? Yes? 
this can just have a vector plate for this. So this guy is going to be minus of cosines n pi over n pi, and I evaluate 0 and 1, right? So this guy is going to be, uh, so the antiderivative of sinus <coughs> is minus cosinus, so I have cosinus n pi y over n pi, I evaluate at 0 and 1. This gives me uh, minus cosinus of n <coughs> pi plus cosinus of 0 over n pi. So what is cosinus of n pi? Yes? You can just add back the play of this. So this gives you minus 1 over n and plus 1 over n, over n pi. Right. So this is the first interval. Now we have to compute the second interval. Um, so the second interval will be interval from 0 to 1, uh, 1 to e of um, sinus of n pi log, uh, log x squared. <coughs> 1 over x dx. So how do I compute this interval? Yes. Yes, can you sign the back of the of this? Again, here you use the same trick, right? So you put y to be log x. So this becomes the interval from 0 to 1 of sinus of n times y squared <coughs> dy. Again, you use the same change of variable. You put y to be log, I, log x, so 1 over x dx will become dy. You change the interval from 1 to e to 0 to 1, you have sin squared dy, right? What is the next step? What is sin squared? Mm, yes? Can you sign the back of the of this? So this guy, is going to be 1 minus cosinus of 2 n pi over 2. And I integrate from 0 to 1 dy. All right? So what is the value of this interval? Um, yes? Can you say the back of the this? So the first guy gives you uh, uh, y over 2. You evaluate at 0 and 1, right? So this is 1 half. And the second guy gives you sinus of n pi y over 4 n pi. You evaluate at 0 and 1. And this is 0, right? So a and lambda n will be. So a n lambda n will be the ratio of the two in uh, the two quantities that I just found. So this is minus one plus one over n pi <coughs> divided by one half, which means that this is two minus n over n pi, right? So you take the uh, you take this one divided by this one, and you get a n lambda n. So this gives you 2 times 1 minus, minus 1 to the power n over n pi. What is the value of, uh, of uh, a n now? Yeah, uh, yes? You just divide that by lambda n. What is the value of lambda n? 1 minus n pi squared. Let's have a microphone for this. So a n will be 1 over lambda n, 2, 1 minus minus 1 to the power n over n pi. So lambda n is uh, 1 over 1 minus n pi squared, right? So, so here I have 2 times 1 minus minus 1 power n over n pi. This is basically the an that you want. And we finish uh, the proof, right? Watch this. So basically, in this case, you want to do the same trick with before. So the critical case, is, the critical point is that you, when you expand it, you replace all of the phi n, all of the mass by lambda n phi n. And then you do exactly as the previous uh, Laplace operator case, right? So have a nice weekend. Thank you.